Hello again, this is UML Operator. Hello, in this session, we're gonna be talking about use cases. Finally, we've been building up to this moment, preparing all of the modelers for how to apply tooling, especially from Sparks Enterprise Architect, to build and drive use cases. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later on. But today you're gonna to learn what a use case is, why use use cases, when to use use cases, and how to use use cases. As usual, I like to start off by giving you all some tools that you can use to help yourselves get started in whatever the subject matter we're in. This time, we're not gonna go out to Spark's welcome site. You can certainly do that, but you could use the EA example project file that I've shown you many times. But more importantly, from the start page, if you go to create from patterns, and then you just short trip down the ladder here to use case diagrams. Sparks provides you a great deal of information on how to get started with use cases. I'm telling you, it is just wonderful. So you can go through basic use case model, use case model with includes to understand the various uh, associations, connectors, system arc actors are, people see or think actor, they think about a human stick figure. Well, an actor is more than a human. It can also be a system or machine, especially in today's age where we've got bots that are out there, uh, virtual assistants, AI, that's help driving whatever your platform or your user experience is. So use cases with extend, generalization, collaboration use cases. And again, if you scroll down, just a wealth of information, training material here for you to get started with a use case. And the cool thing about it is if you're in a particular area or package that you want to be on, you just simply select create models and it will build the model for you. And let me get rid of this one. I'm going to delete this entire package. So you're in the package that you want to drive the pattern wizard into, and I'm just gonna click on the parent here, and we're going to just use this starter use case model, and we're gonna click create models. As soon as I select that, it goes out and builds the package for you. So when you have a base model to start, it's got a couple of use cases, it's got a system boundary and a couple of actors. It does, they're not populated, so you can see in notes that these are empty. And so it helps you get started with some general elements already built out. It puts you into the toolbox and you're ready to go. And you can go back and forth between the start page, go through the discussion material, references, and drive around this if you want to get ahead in the subject. All right, let's, let's use this basic use case model. And this is going to be a multi-part series because I could speak for an hour or hours on this subject. And when I'm teaching courses on UML modeling, computer and software engineering, I just spend a whole day just on use cases. The frustrating thing for me over the years is that I'll go into a project uh, enterprise or down to a small project and the stakeholders say, we need a couple of use cases. And the next day they show up with a couple of circles and stick figures with some lines here we go, and there's no substance. They, there's really nothing there but some PowerPoint slides or Visio diagrams, or they're using some drawing tool, I won't mention them right now, uh, to draw actors and ellipses, you know, circles. And that's not a use case. <laughs> you, you failed to build use cases. And so what we're going to do is show you how to build real effective use cases for specific objectives. Now let's launch EA Example Project. All of you, if you have Sparks Enterprise Architect, this comes with Sparks. So we're gonna go ahead and launch this and we're gonna minimize getting started. Use case models are in UML modeling package. You can certainly do a fine package here and you can search and you can peck through these examples they give you. And a use case is a behavioral diagram, right? So we'll roll down through here. 
uh, we can click on use case diagrams. EA examples gives you some starting context. Go into manage users. Let me minimize this. These navigation cells are powerful. You just click on them and they'll pop up. A modal will pop up and you can click on the next one to get an idea to very quickly get to the diagrams that you want to talk about. But what we're going to focus on is managing users. This is one of my favorite examples. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click this. And it takes us to this particular model. We're going to go to pan and zoom and make this fit a little better. There we go. We've got basically everything that we need here. Now, in this example, these aren't populated. There's no notes. There's no notes in the associations. But the reasons for showing this is that I want to outline like the characteristics of a use case diagram, a use case model. So first, we're going to start with the actor. That's this stick figure. Look in the toolbox. It's an actor. Doesn't need to be a stick figure, but that's how it's represented in UML and in modeling over a long period of time, even before UML. This is your actor. Then you have an oval. This doesn't have to be an oval, how an oval is defined math in mathematics, but it can be a circle. Bottom line is, is we tend to use an ellipse or oval shaped element to represent our use case elements. So what is this box that's around these use cases that are here? It, in the tooling, you see this is at a boundary. But it, it, it represents the scope of your conversation, your collaboration, your use case model. It, this, so this represents the scope, and we'll talk more about this, of your use cases and your use case definitions and objectives. So what is an actor? An actor is an external entity or entities that interact with the system. They can represent human users, other systems, or external hardware. Actors are depicted as stick figures usually, but they do not have to be. And as we advance in the subject, you'll see examples of that. So what is a use case? A use case represents a specific functionality or a discrete unit of the system's behavior. Each use case describes a sequence of actions performed by the system when a particular actor inter interacts with it. So the use cases are represented by these ovals, which we talked about earlier. We refer to the lines that connect these elements as relationships. Sometimes you'll hear me just call them connectors. I've even referred to them as associations, regardless if they're in a dependency line format. But these are the relationships between the elements in your use case models. So this first solid line here with no arrows on it, just referred to it as association. You've heard this connector referred to that in many other sessions in this channel. So this is essentially a line connecting an actor to a use case represents the association and shows that the actor is interacting with or initiating a particular use case. Next, we're going to roll down to this relationship here, and it's referred to as the include relationship. The include relationship is shown by a dashed arrow and indicates that one use case includes the functionality of another use case. This relationship is used to show that one use case invokes another to perform additional steps, actions, or trigger events. All right, next we're going to talk about the extend relationship. But in the Spark EA examples model, you got to separate these lines, otherwise you're going to get yourself confused. So we're going to talk about extend. Here's another extend and what this means. So the extend relationship is depicted by a dashed arrow with an extend keyword or stereotype and indicates optional behavior that can be added to a base use case under specific conditions. It represents an optional extension essentially of the base use case. In this case, this is the base use case, right? And in this case, this is the base use case, and it is extending for this use case, and it's optional. Because when you're in there viewing account, the actor is viewing account details, it's optional for them to be able to view history. So I hope that makes sense. And then the invoke relationship here is essentially a dependency that's using the invoke stereotype. 
So if we have traceability turned on here, and I'll cover traceability a lot more as we're proceeding, especially in this series, but you can see that view account details depends on view open. So what it's stating that it depends on this, it invokes whatever's going on here, whether it's non-technical or technical, it could be a human interaction or interactions, could be systems, interaction and events, but we'll get into that more as we proceed. All right, next, let's get to the most important part, I think, of use cases and missed quite often by modelers, and that's the system boundary. This is this box or rectangle that goes around the use cases and any actors that's inside the boundaries. This represents the scope of the system, defining what's inside as well as external to the boundary. So we've talked about what use cases are and the various elements that are used to drive a use case, but why are we using use cases? And so the benefits are, have several purposes. Requirements analysis, use case diagrams help you identify and define the functional requirements of the system and capturing the interactions between users as well as the system. Communication. Use case diagrams provide an effective way to communicate the system's functionality and their interactions to stakeholders, including developers, designers, and end users. Another benefit is testing and validation. Use cases or diagrams serve as a basis of test cases, essentially, is what I want to say, ensuring that the required functionality are tested. And we'll get into that as we go into this series. Use case prioritization. Use case diagrams can aid in the prioritization and planning of development and delivery efforts based on the importancy, the importance and the frequency of such use cases. And then the final benefit is system design. Use case diagrams provide a foundation for the detailed design of the system behavior and its user interfaces. All right, so we're gonna wrap up this first part and in the next series, we're gonna start diving down into examples of effective use cases. Now, this is one of my favorite examples that Sparks provides, especially this use case right here. We're gonna, this ellipse right here, the horizontal eight. If we double click on this, we get to a diagram. Um, I wanna call this a communication diagram and there's message events included, and we'll talk more in the next session about this. But we have a boundary and a control, and we're gonna talk about this, but it gives you some notes. More importantly, down here, it's giving you a sequence diagram. Let's go ahead and double click this and launch this. Gives you a sequence diagram showing the actor as an instance, an instance of create account, and we'll talk more about what instance means, or objects, and then create new account, leading to entity, which is the data. So when we're talking about model view control design patterns, your boundary is your view, your control is your logic or your control layer, and your entity is your data model. So, or represents a conversation there, right? And we'll talk more about sequence diagrams in a later session. So in our next session, we're gonna dive down into some good example use cases and then the session following that, I'm going to show you how to write real, effective use cases. Thanks very much for watching. Happy modeling, and I'll see you in the next one.